Page 34, the Wild Rider. 6-8 time, no sharps or flats in the key signature. We're actually in the key of A minor here. Got some accidentals though. I'm going to take it one hand at a time. Let's make sure we get the finger moving around pretty good. Eighth note, well an eighth note gets a count in 6-8 time, so it's no big deal. We're coming in on beat 6. Watch this fingering carefully. The actual position for the right hand at the beginning is an A minor chord in second version here. And that's the fingering we used for the chord. So makes sense. That's the fingering we'd use in the book or in the piece. And that's what they've done right there. And then you, you gotta come up here a little bit because we need an F. We have to accommodate that. So so it's then come up. And then come back down. And again, when I learn a piece of music, I try and play it all legato if I can. This helps me to f work out my fingering. Yes, both of those G's are sharp because that uh, accidental applies for the rest of the measure. You do that some more. Third line down. Around measure 9, you got the F chords. Second inversion F chords. And then come up here. You got rest, you got time to move here, and then next measure 11 C chords, and then the F chord in the next measure. It's and use this thumb as a pivot and you just come across. So like so. Okay, and you do that some more. That's the piece for the right hand for the most part. And the left hand. They give you a bass clef at the beginning and then immediately give you treble clef. They could have just given you a treble clef at the beginning and be done with it. Same difference. But this is, okay, as long as you understand you're in treble clef. And you're in this position. And you're just A minor chord. Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, five. Make sure you lift up on these rests. It's important. And then you come down to the E chord. Two, three, rest. And, Two one here. You do that some more, and then down on measure eleven. You, left hand gets the melody. Then this is an F chord here. Now there's other fingerings we can use for this besides what's in the book, because I could finger this right at the beginning like an F chord, like I did at the beginning here, and finger it that way. Stay right there until measure 10, then I can come up and put fourth finger. So I only moved one time. I got all of that. And the fingering in the book, you have to cross over the thumb. Are you here? You're crossing over to the two. Here. Or, you could come up here and put fourth finger. Could keep going up the piano on that passage. Et cetera, whatever. There's different fingerings. This is a fast piece, so the fingering you use needs to work for you. I would recommend not moving anymore and you have to. So I would not recommend this where you're having to constantly move around. Either do it this way or do it what's in the book. You only move one time. And then for measure 11, you scrunch up a little bit, second finger. Just leave the fourth finger on the E is fine. There's five and two there, and you do that some more. Put the hands together slowly. Well, and again, I'm still connecting everything. Make sure you play the rest in the left hand. Now there's no rest there. difference between a rest, 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 and connect it is important. So make sure you get those in just like it's written. Let's jump down to measure 11 where the left hand gets the fun. Here. Again, lift up in the right hand. Here. That's tricky. 
This is the last measure on page 34. There. Work that out. And that's the piece, Rex. I mean, it's pretty repetitious. Go slow, whatever speed you gotta go. Get rid of the hesitations. You know, the, the beat has to be steady. Once you start these eighth notes, it's gotta be a steady beat all the way to the end. You don't speed up, you don't slow down, you're just there. The horse just goes, I guess. I'm assuming the wild rider is riding a horse. Uh, you can ride other things. You can ride a chicken, I don't care. But it's got to be a steady pace. Then we can add the staccatos. Well, let's talk about the staccatos. All the staccatos are short. But they got slurs. And s separate the, the last note of the slur to the next one. Separate that. Don't combine them. Oh, separate. It should be a two note slurs down up. And because of the speed, I recommend a finger staccato here. That wrist staccato gets tiring very quickly when you have to go fast. Now with the chords you pretty much have to, but you're not playing constantly. It's just one every three beats or so. You got time to do this, but I would still recommend finger here. And add in the staccatos and the sforzandos. You see there at the first line, there's two sforzandos. That is a really serious accent. Don't get vulgar with it, but it is more than just a regular accent. It is a serious accent. Both hands. So put in the sforzandos, and then we can add the dynamics. Goes to the melody. Whatever you think moderately loud is. That makes the sforzando very loud. Because if it were just an accent, it would be loud, because an accent goes up a little. But a sforzando is major. So, so, and that's the right hand, although both hands get the sforzando. Keep the left hand down a little bit. I want to hear the melody. Now when you get to the second section, and that starts around measure 9 where the left hand gets melody. Those four sandals are only in the left hand, not the right. So if you can, keep this left, right hand down a little bit. So on measure 10, it's a, just that one note. Not both hands. If you can, just keep it down. To the, it's kind of hard to do when you're going quick and both hands are doing the same thing. Because at the top four sandals was in both hands. But not here, so try and do that. Uh, you'll notice sometimes the articulation isn't quite the same in both hands. Like on in the first line, the last two measures where you have the slurs. You on the left hand it's nothing. Well to make it simple, I would suggest once you get past the quarter note, make the left hand match the right. It's just easier if they're both doing the same. So it's here, connect these. So down here. Both hands up together and play them both staccato. It's not marked staccato in the left hand. My point is, first, it's easier if you're doing the same thing in both hands. Secondly, this is really quick. Nobody's going to know the difference one way or the other. And thirdly, if nothing is smart, you can interpret it any way you want. You can play it staccato if you choose to. You just don't have to. I'm suggesting you just do it so the hands stay the same. So you can, I'm not, uh, that's hard to do to keep one hand down and the other one's just going nuts. So do them both the same. So forth. Then we add the speed. Allegro. It's fast. And that's the overall feel of it. It's not really super fast. It's not Vivace or Presto or none of that. It's just fast. It's got to be controlled. It's got to be even. It's got to be your fast, not mine. Then we get into the interpretation part of it. Well, there's not a lot to interpret it. You just go. They don't give you any dynamics to speak of except the moderately loud at the beginning and on measure 16 or the double bars, the new section, are moderately loud again. You're not going to stay moderately loud through all of that. You're going to get a little louder and softer besides the sports on those. You can come up and down. So you got to get to know the piece and get comfortable with it and start feeling it. Then you can. It's like a measure four. When I come off of this, 
I tend to come down a little bit. I also tend to hang on to that last note. It's just, it's a habit, it's a way of interpreting. I know it says staccato, but it's just, it's just it could be a long staccato. I just don't make it that one particular note. At the end of each of these phrases, I tend to let the last note last a little longer. Just a hair longer, not a lot. It's an interpretation thing. There's a repeat sign there in the third line on page 34, so you repeat that part. Okay. I'd like to play this with you very slowly, double check the notes and the rhythms. Not going to do any dynamics, there isn't any dynamics to speak of. So I'll give us five counts because we come in on beat six. Let's try it slowly. One, two, three, ready, go. Repeat. Rest. Rest. 